Turning now to advocacy. I recently sat down with Finseca's Chief Advocacy Officer, Army Robinson, to talk about the association's agenda, the issues it's fighting for, and their importance for brokerage. So, Army, let's talk about Finseca advocacy. How is Finseca unifying the voice of public policies to increase financial awareness, and why should this be important to brokerage? Well, I think financial security for all is a mission we can all get behind, and that's really what we, how we chose Finseca's name. We wanted to choose a name that evoked the calling of your profession, and brokerage is absolutely part of that. What you do every day, in our estimation, is deliver financial security to the American people. And so Finseca is driven uh, of the notion of financial security for all, and we really want to bring the profession back together under one tent uh, to close the $12 trillion life insurance protection gap, deliver greater annuity protection and lifetime income solutions to people. And in doing that, we're going to be aligned with our sister trades and industry partners uh, in order to drive better and more effective results on behalf of your profession. So let's talk about the advocacy agenda, if we could. What's on it? How is it determined? And then also, what about volunteer roles? Sure. So, I mean, core to what we do is the tax treatment of the products. They're all Ter terribly sensitive, as is the client planning. And then um, the commission-based uh, model of delivering financial security advice is essential to what we do and to what you do. Uh, and those things, unfortunately, come under various degrees of threat. Not unlike uh, selling life insurance and annuities, uh, advocacy tends to be kind of an infinity game. Um, that's good, I guess, for my job security, but it also means uh, we've got to continually reinvest in this. Um, most public servants, most policymakers are not experts in what you do and, and our membership does. And so we have to teach them. And that uh, with the turnover in Congress and staff and state legislators, even in insurance commissioners, uh, we have to constantly educate and re-educate so they understand the impact of the noble work you do. So our advocacy agenda is set annually, uh, principally by our Government Affairs Committee, which is a uh, committee of our board of directors. And so to serve on that, you have to be part of the board. Uh, we have some fabulous brokerage members joining uh, the Finseca board next year, and I'm really excited about their contributions. Of course, your very own Chip Van Dusen has been my partner in crime for a number of years. He chairs the committee today. Uh, and so annually, uh, they approve an agenda set, uh, whether it's inside buildup, uh, protection of death benefits, annuities, retirement, standards of conduct and commissions we talked about. Beyond that, obviously those uh, nine people can't cover every issue with the depth that's necessary. And so we have a series of working groups that cover specific areas and dive deeper into those issues to advise the team and the professional staff and council around uh, what we do and how we do it. And that's staffed with, uh, or uh, populated those working groups with volunteers from across the profession. Um, and that covers you know, standards of conduct, wealth transfer, retirement. Um, there's a series of different issues. And then we have task forces that take on project-based work. If there's a really niche, deep dive we've got to do, um, we may talk about it later in this interview, but uh, long-term care is an increasing area of, the, of public policy interest, and we have to develop some principles around that. So we've got a task force that's uh, created just to work on that. So there might be some members who look at federal advocacy and just become immediately overwhelmed by it. Talking heads, mixed messaging, just the process in general. If you're trying to run an agency, that can just be a lot to try to stay dialed into. So can we maybe simplify it? Can you offer three issues, let's say, that FinSec is currently watching at the federal level on behalf of the profession? And why are you dialed in on those? Absolutely. I mean, the commission-based model of advice in the standards of conduct, which is DOL, um, SEC, NAIC, is under attack. There's a group of regulators and, and putative com consumer advocates who believe in a fiduciary fee-only world. And that result is bad for the profession and for the financial security of the American people because it restricts holistic financial advice to only the wealthy, and that's not a very good place to be in our estimation. Um, so DOL is looking at reviving the Obama era uh, rule on uh, fiduciary, and that could have dramatic impacts on the profession. Um, so that's a big one. Tax is always uh, a sensitive area, and the Build Back Better 
uh, President Biden's reconciliation vehicle, I like saying is only mostly dead. Uh, but we have to remain hyper vigilant around that stuff. And we just uh, a week or so ago had the president release his budget and green book that had a whole bunch of uh, tax proposals that would not be favorable. So we have to stay up on that. And the third area is retirement. Um, and, and despite all the partisanship you see on cable news, there's still lots of really good bipartisan agreement. Uh, the House of Representatives just passed their latest retirement legislation, 414 to 5. Uh, and we expect to put that bill on the president's desk before the end of the year. That's got a lot of interesting tools around annuities and retirement savings that's going to enhance the financial security of the American people. So in addition to the federal level, then, Fonseca has also been active at the state level. In fact, there was a recent move to hire a vice president of state affairs. So what is going on at the state level? And if you could give us some examples. Sure. I mean, uh, working on behalf, uh, you know, the other part of the Fonseca story is we want to better serve the whole of this profession. And you can't do that in a state regulated industry unless you're active in state advocacy. So about now, two years ago almost, we launched state advocacy. Uh, about six months ago, we hired our first internal professional, Melissa Bova, uh, who's been doing a fantastic job. Uh, but whether it's the NAIC or states like Washington with their long-term care proposal, California and New York with their standards of conduct, the 187 rule that's been so challenging uh, for financial security and the profession in, in New York, or California looking at a similar rule, um, there are a whole series of different issues. Most recently, uh, the state of Kentucky, if you can believe it, their lower chamber passed a tax bill that would have applied a 6% tax on financial advice, among many, many other things. Uh, and I'm really pleased to report that through some direct action uh, by Fonseca and Melissa and uh, work with our partners, uh, we got that piece of their services tax uh, stripped out. And so we won't face that challenge in Kentucky and we have an estat we've uh, succeeded in preventing a really uh, problematic precedent. So clearly Fonseca is very well positioned as the voice of the profession. Let's touch on some ways that members of the profession can get involved because it really takes a village. It, no doubt it does. And, and there is, uh, we have a fantastic professional team on both the internal side and on our council side, but there's no better advocate than members of the profession themselves. And most of advocacy is education, right? It's back to what I was saying to you earlier. We have to teach them um, about what the profession does, how they do it, and how that then connects to the policy. But none of the policy detail ma details matter unless we can uh, convince the policymakers that what you do is important. Uh, and so we spend a ton of our time and effort uh, at the advocacy conference we'll have in May. A lot of that is about educating them about financial security, life insurance, annuities, the role that independent uh, distribution plays in delivering that to their constituents. Only after we've convinced them of that can we talk about things like inside buildup, 7702, like these complex subjects. Uh, it's just like it washes like right over their heads unless they think the impact is important. Um, so we have a really well-developed federal advocacy program uh, called the Ambassador Program, where we get people involved and we make them, uh, pair them up with policymakers uh, in order to do that kind of education, build deep, abiding, and personal relationships, just as people would with clients or advisors, and then through that process do the education that's necessary. Um, we're building out a series of different pilots to uh, accomplish the same result on the state side. There's a couple of different regulatory differences that make that. Uh, but anybody who's interested, I promise we can make it fun. We can make it interesting. I know it's valuable. And so if you give us a little bit of time and you raise your hand, uh, we can help demystify this and make it pretty simple for you. And it really is essential work. Army, why would you say in your mind it's important that Nailba and Fonseca are working together? I couldn't be more excited to work with the brokerage community to learn from them. I mean, that's when I was hired uh, five years ago, uh, I owned a life insurance policy, but you didn't hire me to build one or design one. Uh, and so I can't wait to get engaged with the Nailba membership and, and, and incorporate uh, all of you into our advocacy process, um, whether as ambassadors or serving on working groups, so we can really get that perspective um, and broaden our appeal so we can continue our important work to unify the profession and close uh, the protection gap. So I think that's, that's the thing that I'm most excited about because 
Uh, the brokerage community is a huge part of the future of this profession. And uh, we absolutely need you at the table working with us, crafting these solutions, ensuring that they work, not only for uh, independent distribution and career, but we need to bring everybody together. And uh, by getting uh, NAILBA members involved in our advocacy development process and in our advocacy deployment process, uh, we'll do that in a much better way.